Here we go. I'm starting now. This is it. This is episode... Pause. 299. Episode 299 of No Laugh Track Podcast. This is Justin Severson, the host. We are here at Acme Comedy Company, because why would it be, be anywhere else? This is Acme's podcast. For his third appearance, he's here with me today, Jay-Z. Wow. Yeah. The, the original Jay-Z. The original Jay-Z. Joey Z, as I normally call you. Sure. Has anyone ever called you Joey Z? Uh, maybe ninth grade soccer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be laughing a lot today, uh, thanks to Joe Zimmerman, who is the, I believe is your third time with me here on this yeah. podcast. Thank you for coming over today to do this. My pleasure. I was here, yeah, I was here 2015, the summer, 2017, the winter, and back now in the summer. Yeah. Or the spring. Yeah. Whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. This is definitely the best uh, weather you've experienced. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Joey Z. <laughs> yeah. In ninth grade, my high school soccer nickname was Joey Z and the Sloth. What? <laughs> because I I actually had a good sprint time, I'll have you know. Mm-hmm. But my movements look slow, and I probably talk slow. <laughs> okay. And I just have sloth-like sloth like uh, behavior. Okay. I finally met a sloth two weeks ago at the Cincinnati Zoo. I got to meet a sloth in person, petted a sloth. You... A sweet, sweet sloth. Did you climb up the tree to get that close? Or? They had a little little, uh, little uh, VIP visiting area with a sloth. and uh, you, you, you paid for the meet and greet? I, I got it free. I had a hookup. Nice. Yeah. And uh, sloth, coarse, coarse, wiry hair. Not, not the softness that you'd think. No. That wouldn't make a good uh, scarf. But he was sweet. He, he just... Stared right at me. I thought we had a moment. Uh huh. But then I, when I moved, he was still just staring in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a thing. But my favorite moment of the Cincinnati Zoo was driving home uh-huh. in the lift back to the hotel. And the lift driver said, how is, how is the Cincinnati Zoo? And I was like, I got to meet a sloth. I never thought I'd get to pet a sloth. And he goes, I never thought I'd get to meet somebody who petted a sloth. <laughs> I was like, wow, we got a real... Real, uh, real yeah, fun, real... fun Lyft driver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember the, uh, did you ever watch Married with Children well, way as back? A, as a young teenager, I did. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, I'm going to get it probably partly wrong here, because uh, I often do when I try to pull something from memory, but there was an episode of that where they went, the family on Married with Children went on vacation, and the big, it was to some small town, and the big, uh... The big gathering in that town that weekend was they were going to go meet the man who met the man who met Jim Neighbors or something like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> meet the man who met the man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is perfect. That is the story of a lot of our lives. Yeah, pretty pretty. Just trying to hear stories, secondhand stories. You know, what you just said about that, uh, the driver after the Cincinnati Zoo? Yeah, I remember it. I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just testing your short term memory. Yeah, Joe, is what I'm we're still doing here. I'm we're, still with it. We're gonna keep doing that. Every, my, every two minutes, I'm gonna recall something. My brain, so far, my brain seems to be working. <laughs> That's weird. Well, let's see if you remember this, Smarty. Uh-huh. You had a tweet. I don't remember when this is from, but I wrote it down here. It says, "Help me think of a believable fake job to tell Lyft and Uber drivers when pressed." Oh yes, yes, I'm, and I'm, I want. I want to know how that is. I believe it was from like last fall. I, I went pretty back far, back pretty far. And I've one. done, I went undercover investigative Please testing tell. out different. I've tested out different fake jobs to tell Uber and Lyft drivers. Okay. If I was feeling like I didn't want to have a big conversation, like sometimes I'll be in a Lyft and I'm feeling fine and they'll say, hey, what brings you to town? What do you do? And I'll be like, all right, I, I do comedy. I'm doing Acme this week. And then they'll be, you know, they'll be like, ooh, comedy. And they'll want to know a lot about it. Yeah. And then that's a 20 minute conversation all the way to the hotel. Other times you're just tired and you don't want to be interviewed during your Lyft drive. Right. And so somebody said, one fake job you could say that'll have no follow-up questions is uh, uh, insurance salesman, sometimes appliances. 
Okay. And I was like, all right, I'll try that out. Yeah. The first time I said that. Oh, here we go. No, no. They said pharmaceutical sales, sometimes appliances. Oh. And I said, okay, yeah, that, that they wouldn't probably have much to follow up because your sales, you know, they don't want to buy something. Right. So I arrived in the Midwest, New York. Lyft drivers don't talk to you, but you arrive in the Midwest and it's like, hey, I'm Larry. I'm retired. I'm just here to chat. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for fun. <laughs> right. You're like, oh, Larry. I've been with that guy. You're I, right. I have 30 miles to get to my destination. I'm just trying to, to do this for my job to get places. Larry, I just avoided someone for three hours on a plane. Yeah. Come on. But it's part of the job as a professional traveler is to end up having conversations sometimes with Lyft drivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of me feels like, oh, you should just do it. But another part of me is like, no, I've never once talked to them ever again. So like, I don't know. It just feels too transactional. Yeah. Anyway, but some people are friendly and like to chat and that's fine. Anyway, pharmaceutical sales. Uh, and he goes, the first time I said it, Midwest, he goes, oh, I'm in the market for a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fridges you got? I'm like, ah, oh, you know, electric. We do electric. You didn't say electric. <laughs> I did. I was stunned. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was just like, oh, yeah. I just laughed. I was like, ha, bulk. We do, you know, it's a bulk company. Um, but I was stunned. Yeah. Um, and so I came up with the perfect answer. If you ever need, to have no follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. My good friend in Morgantown, West Virginia, where I grew up, I, I overheard him say he works for a company that does accounts payable for various clients. And the room just shut down. <laughs> there was just nothing you could say to follow up to that. It's the most bland answer. <laughs> it really is. And it just it's just a huge turn off. <laughs> and I said, can I use that, Ryan? And he was like, oh, yeah, I hate my job. I'd love for my job to help somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've tried that ever since a few times that I didn't want to talk. Yeah. What do you do? I work for a company that does accounts payable for various clients. And they're, huh. And various clients. No more, no more follow-ups ever. That, that has always worked. Accounts payable for various clients. Various clients. Have you ever considered uh, when you do, if you are, you know, in more of a chatty mood and you do say what you really do? Oh, yeah. Stand-up comedy. But then switch it up. Like, oh, because I assume that they go, oh, what kind of comedy do you do? Or what kind of com comedian are you? Which is a really weird. Or what? Yeah. Well, standard Lyft driver either says, oh, are you like... They'll, or are you like the one guy I've heard of? The, the I feel like it's one of three things. They'll be like, "Oh, I got some jokes," and they'll they'll actually want to tell you some jokes. Yes, which I actually don't mind. I like hearing street jokes. Yeah, yeah. That's probably my preferred thing. Uh huh. I'll tell you some jokes. All right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Entertain me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I agree. Uh, the other one will be, "Oh, what? How'd you get into that?" Which is a harder thing to answer in a lift. Right. Yeah. You know what? Take the long way. This is going to be, <laughs> this is quite a story. <laughs> How'd you get into that? And then the third one is, yeah, they'll name some comedians that they like and then ask me, you know, if I'm like, you know, if you I'm like Kevin Hart. Yeah. If I'm like Kevin Hart, <laughs> if I'm like Chris Rock, have yeah. I met Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah. Um, but then the worst, the fourth, the worst is, oh, like, Give, do you know do some of your act for me obviously that's the worst mm -hmm. if they want you to do jokes for them yeah i can only imagine and you have to be like uh it, it doesn't really work in a lift drive situation it's more for an audience i need a microphone <laughs> can't do this without a microphone do you have a microphone in this car and if you if you do i will be happy to perform but i have yet to find yeah that's a good question because somebody gave me i know the job now accounts payable for various clients i have yet to hear a comedian have a good answer to when somebody says, oh, do do something funny or tell me one of your jokes. Every, there's no good answer to that. Every comedian is kind of like, oh, you have to be at the show. Yeah. Or I got to be in the right mood. Or you're just be. or we're just or we but we just always seem like a dick. Uh huh. Essentially. <laughs> oh, like whatever we say, it seems like we're being a dick. Yeah. And so there's no I haven't figured out the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is why I 
Jeez, I don't think I've ever, you know, uh, 299 episodes of this podcast, I don't think I've ever gone and, you know, cornered my guest with something like that. Like, hey, so what is your stuff, you know? What do you do to make people laugh? Like, ugh. No. Awkward. Uh, yeah, no, but it's a typical, like, even it's a typical question on radio is like, so what is your comedy like or morning, morning TV? And it's um, hard to describe your comedy, Well, your own comedy. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you something, Joe, as somebody <laughs> who worked on those, on one of those morning shows yeah. and I had a coworker that would do that sometimes. Like if a comedian came in to do their little 10, 15 minute segment yeah. and it wasn't going as well as this person was hoping that it would. Sure. My coworker would basically go, why don't you go ahead and do some of your material? I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Just say it. Go ahead and do some of your material. So what do you do to make people laugh? How do you, how you out there making people laugh? Like, no, 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 don't. Well, it's just uh yeah, it's one of those questions. It's a good question to ask if you want to stump a comedian. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> if you want to stump a comedian, ask them to do their material. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's move on here. I was at the show last night. We spoke briefly before uh the show last night. Yeah. Uh thank you for coming out. For sure. It was great. I'm uh very glad I did. You I got to see Ali Sultan again, which mm-hmm. I he's I told you actually. When we spoke real briefly before the show started, and I said, I'm on a streak of like seeing him four times in a row, probably oh, yeah, being nice. the host. Yeah. Uh, I went home last night, told my wife that he was working again, and she's like, Oh, is it the same? I go, No, I think he did all. Like, I, so I'll leave yeah. you're listening to this. Yeah. He's great. I'm impressed that you're like just that, you know, your small part of the show, the smallest, I guess. It's not small. But you know what I'm saying? But the fact that he's doing new material, like, yeah. and I was just like maybe three weeks ago, a month ago, I saw him. Very impressive mm-hmm. to me. And Greg Coleman was doing new stuff too. Hilarious. Super funny. Super duper funny. And then, of course, Joe comes out and kills it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That was a fun show last night. Uh, <laughs> got to talk about the, got to talk about the Minneapolis raccoon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, how, do, will you have more NPR raccoon material this evening or I hope so. the weekend? I, I just dipped my toes in the water last night, and the crowd was like, "Yes, we want to hear more yeah, about yeah, the yeah. NPR raccoon." I was like, "All right, yeah. I guess, I guess I'll keep digging into the NPR raccoon." Not that was the biggest event in the Twin Cities since the Super Bowl. Yeah, was the raccoon on I believe Tuesday? It. Yeah, I mean it was international news. I mean, I know somebody in uh, in Sweden who knew it, that knows about it. It's like on the Swedish news. Yeah, yeah. It's just in the. It's just international news. It's <laughs> international. When something goes viral, it just keeps going more viral. Yeah, it's weird. And then it gives people a chance to analyze why it went viral because that's what i was watching this morning is people analyzing why it went viral. i actually want to hear that analysis because i had that same question i was stumped as to why this particular thing would catch fire yeah and i was i watched some of the videos and i i the only thing i can can guess is that it went viral because that it was silly because it was so silly that it was going viral that people kept being like, how is this going viral? And that was what was driving it. It's like, it's a raccoon climbing a building. Why are people so into it? And then we watch and we're like, yeah, why are people so into it? I think you're probably right. <laughs> but it could be just that silly. But there are. But then there were enough people that were genuinely invested in the raccoon's life. Oh, I saw a video this morning. Of the, it was a, you know, like a reaction video of people watching the animal finally get to the top of the building. And these women were like almost in tears. They were so happy. Like, I know. <laughs> it made it. Oh, my God. I know. And... <laughs> That raccoon is so world famous, I was shocked that they just immediately released it back into a residential neighborhood in Shakopee. You're missing out on Minnesota is missing out on millions of new dollars in revenue. I know. (laughs) For people visiting the NPR raccoon Mm -hmm. in a nice little, his nice little habitat. That's a free zoo animal. Oh, you get that thing next time the twins are in town, you get that thing out throwing the first pitch. That would have, the NPR raccoon would have tripled the zoo uh foot traffic would if, in 2019 if if the raccoon appeared here at acme and asked you for a guest set would you oblige oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean if if the raccoon's handler 
if we're being more realistic, if the raccoon's okay. handler was like, hey, um, NPR raccoon's here. We just want to put him on stage for a little bit. He's going to he's going to like gerbil into the microphone. What what sounds do gerbils make? He's going to he's going to bark into the microphone. We'll just give him a little five minutes to sort of bark. I would we, be like, we have a tiny we have a tiny building. It's going to climb. Because we're writing a book. We're trying to publicize a new book about him that's coming out. And uh, I'd be like, yeah, put him up here. And I would tweet it out. Yeah. And there would be standing room only. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, there were so many dollars missed out. I wonder if it's not. Is it not legal to capitalize on a building raccoon? (laughs) I don't know. Why is Minneapolis not capitalizing? Hey, St. Paul. That was St. Paul's raccoon, not Minneapolis. Is there a division between St. Paul and Minneapolis that I need to be aware of? Uh, Yeah. Is there a rivalry? I mean, besides that there's a river between the two. Is there a rivalry? (laughs) Yes. What is the rivalry? Minnesota is known for being nice. Can't you guys include each other? Well, we are forced to because by b- the close vicinity, but oh yeah, there's a rivalry between Minneapolis and St. Paul. What? Wait, what? Tell me one thing that St. Paul is known for that Minneapolis is not known for uh, and the, vice versa. The, the state capital is in St. Paul. The Minnesota State Fair is in St. Paul. Uh-huh. Uh, the the uh, governor's mansion is in St. Paul. Okay. I, I live. Okay, I live in St. Paul. <laughs> so you live in St. Paul. Is somebody when somebody says Acme's in Minneapolis? When somebody says, "Oh, you're from Minneapolis," in your head, you're like St. Paul. Joe, I work one of my uh, one of my other part time jobs is I work at the uh, XL Energy Center, uh-huh. which is in St. Paul. That's where our yeah. Minnesota Wild play. Yeah, there's a lot of concerts there. I uh-huh. work a lot of those concerts. Yeah. If um. Whoever Paula Abdul comes out and says, "Thank you, Minneapolis," uh, and yeah. the shows in St. Paul, it, it doesn't go over well. People will tweet about it. People will go, will groan. People close to the stage will shout it out and try and correct whoever. No, I get that. When I went to Davidson College, which is twenty miles north of Charlotte, I want to say John Mayer came to Davidson and was like, "What's up, Charlotte?" And it's just fifteen hundred. Davidson College students that are twenty mi- who have never been to Charlotte. See, <laughs> we're twenty miles north. Yeah, and we're just like, uh, that's that's not here. <laughs> so I get that, but but tell me this as a visitor, tell me the difference. Tell me the difference in culture between Minneapolis. You're gonna have more fun in Minneapolis. Okay, but well, like uh, there's no personality differences. Like people are nicer in Minneapolis and meaner in St. Paul. Mm. I would, you know, the St. Paul smaller. I, I would people describe St. Paul as like a the, a small big town, a, the biggest small town. Okay, one one of those. Two. So if I talk about the NPR raccoon, I should say St. Paul, please. Okay, got it, got it, <laughs> got it. Now I know. I'm glad we clarified. Yeah. Uh huh. St. Paul's got a population is much bigger. Downtown is much bigger, mm-hmm. uh, you know, way more nightlife. Well, this is good to know because people list when you I hear people say Minneapolis, St. Paul in one se- in one sentence. Yeah. So you think of that as a combined identity. Yeah. But I guess you don't feel that. N- not not always. <laughs> no, not, not always. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh-huh. But did you do anything fun last night after the after the show? What do you do on a Wednesday night after the show is done? Oh, oh, I get crazy, Justin. Yeah, I, I go home. I, I, uh, I see what's what's playing on Netflix. Um, no, I actually I actually went to the free house, the free oh. house, and had a had a stout a stout drink a guinness or not the the local stout with a friend oh okay yeah it was great nice i had a nice little time out outside it was it's beautiful outside yeah yeah and then today you did a little sightseeing of minneapolis we don't have a we don't have that fancy art museum that you went to today i went to the walker museum yeah and uh played uh played mini golf on the roof in the art and uh yeah visited the galleries the um cool cool gallery there was one piece that was uh had a mel gibson photo on it what yeah it's called the huffy howler was the name of that installment okay the huffy howler with a photo of mel gibson um yeah the walker museum was cool Very when you cool. play mini golf were you by yourself i 
I was with a friend. You were with a friend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna. I was just gonna. Because I was thinking, if you're by yourself, to <laughs> it would be really sad to go play mini golf by myself. <laughs> <laughs> just hey. to, surrounded by other people who are in groups of people, and I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> just like, can I? Do you mind if I play through you guys? I'm moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving a little quicker than this than you guys, since you're a family of four who loves each other. <laughs> can i play through <laughs> i'm here alone you guys are taking way too long and i'm playing very well yeah right <laughs> i just i just destroy i just got a hole in one on the andy warhol <laughs> boxes one did you say andy war warhol warhol yeah in one that was, that was, there was an andy warhol hole I, I don't even know if they meant to do that word play or not. I, I, they must have. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, you know, so before we started recording, um, I told you that I listened back to your previous, uh, the most recent episode when you were here. Yeah, the one, the one we did in February. And you asked me if there's anything I was going to bring, or you said, uh, is there, what did we talk about? Are you going to bring anything up? And I'm looking at my notes here. There is one thing. Oh, hell yeah. Uh only because something happened to me recently where I have now have sort of an experience about this. Doomsday Preppers. Oh, yeah. Do you remember we, we were talking about that? And you were, uh, I don't remember what we said. Well, no, but yeah, the, it, it was but, something that you were had been talking about at the time. Yeah. Right? Totally. Researching? Because of, because of um, yeah, because of Kim Jong-un and living in New York City. And, uh, yeah, I was having more and more fear. You know, I, that's a fun that's a recurring daydream for me since I was a kid, really, is if you hear that a nuke is traveling toward your city, what is your next step? That's always been a fantasy of mine. Do you hop on a bicycle and head for a bridge? Do you get in a car? Do you head for the basement and just park it there? Yeah. And uh, I've decided in my fantasy, in my daydream survival, that I would grab the backpack which I got off Amazon.com, which is a survival backpack. Yeah, good for sold seven. as a survival backpack. Yeah, it's camouflage. <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> That'll I would, help. I would grab my survival backpack and hop on my bike and just start biking. And I don't, I don't know how far I would get, but that way I'd be able to weave through traffic jams. Ah, that's my thought. Okay. So, but then people laugh at me. They're like, "You're not gonna out bike a nuke." <laughs> but I'm like, "Well, I don't know. I feel like that's my best shot." Has anyone tried? <laughs> It's, I feel like I have a better shot of getting in a, than getting in a car because mm -hmm. you're stuck in traffic. Oh, no doubt. People would say, no, just go to the basement. But that just seems boring and sad. We're, we're, we're not talking about a tornado. <laughs> I don't want to be in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die. I want to die bicycling. <laughs> Do you, does the place you live in in New York have a basement? Not really, no. no. We have a laundry room. <laughs> the laundry room. I would just be in a room with laundry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the reason why this is fresh, uh, why this is something I wanted to bring up is I, uh, in my house, we don't have doomsday uh, supplies. You sure. Know? I didn't 12 years ago, 18 years ago, 19 years ago. I didn't 10 years ago. I don't today. Yeah. Right. There's no extra water or extra beans or whatever. I was in a house recently in the last two weeks um, doing some work and all of a sudden came around the corner to their pantry in the basement with these giant containers of freeze-dried beef and freeze-dried chicken and big pallets with, uh, you know, canned corn and canned beans and all of this stuff and bottled water. And I thought, oh, my God, they, there are people still doing this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there are people that are full out obsessed with it yeah like they shape their lives around when their lives are gonna end as we know it yeah and they're gonna live in their little bunker it's i don't know i guess it's just so out of my mind that when it was brought to my attention again like by seeing this firsthand i'm like what i what what do you know that I don't know? Should I be more worried? I think just... Why are you still... Because I saw the labels on the stuff, and some of them were from, like, 2007. <laughs> it was, like, sprouting seeds, 2007. And I'm thinking... Wow. Are you, what, is there a... Do you ever just... Like, all right. Now we might as well just use them. <laughs> yeah. We're not in danger anymore. I might as well use the tom canned tomatoes. I think just, you know, 5 10% of humans are... Con their mind is... You know, because survival is a human instinct or an evolutionary instinct, 
Their minds are literally obsessed with survival. And since there's no current threats to our lives at the moment, they're still just like, well, what could be the threat? And then they prepare for that. Yeah, what could be? Oh. I, I remember a guy, well, a guy telling me, uh, he's like, you got, you got chickens? I was like, no. He's like, that's the key. You got to get chickens for, you know. Once when things go south, because then you, they lay eggs, you're good. Mm -hmm. Like how many, how how many eggs are you gonna eat to survive the apocalypse? How many chickens are laying constant eggs? Anyway, now you got to take chick care of chickens. It's not an apocalypse, and now you just got chickens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen how that plays out on an episode of Survivor. Oh, the TV nice. show Survivor. I yeah. used to watch that. I remember they gave one of the. Uh, one of the tribes, a chicken, mm -hmm. uh, during one of the seasons I watched. And then it was like the people, they couldn't even agree on, we just keep this and just eat the eggs. Or I'm so fucking hungry, screw the eggs, we're cutting the head off and eating, a, and eating the meat. Yeah, that, I feel like that's that idea is going to go south real quick as soon as you just have that craving for... And, and seriously, on the episode of Survivor, like uh, one of the tribe members like snuck behind everybody else's back and took it out of the cage and... We're eating chicken. Are you serious? No more eggs. We're eating chicken. I feel like the producers told him to do that. I. What do you mean? That stuff's all real. The pre, <laughs> do they even producers? What are you talking about? Some of that's real. That's they don't even know the cameras are there, Joe. <laughs> oh, that was definitely a plant. Of that, course. Well, it probably was, was. I mean, that's that's my theory. Yeah, it probably was. It entertained me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But I also don't watch uh, Survivor anymore. Um, World Cup. You, you, Joey Z played soccer when oh, he was a yeah, kid. Do yeah. you give a shit about the World Cup going on right now? I actually was recently asked to be in a pool, to bet twenty dollars to be in a pool, and I haven't researched yet who to select, so I don't know much about it. But I oh. need to do my research because oh. I do have twenty dollars riding on it already. Did you pick, or how did did you get to pick who you, or was it random? Because I, it started this morning. Oh. So if you you missed out if you were supposed to pick your team. All right, so I missed out. <laughs> I apparently they randomly picked for me. Okay, um, I always miss out on the pools. Do Do you know if you got Saudi Arabia? Because I think I watched them play this morning and it was awful. Yeah. They In fact, started. I went on Twitter and people were going, "What level is Saudi Arabia's ta Saudi Arabia's talent? High school, college? You know, like, what was the score? Who they play? League? It was two nothing. Like twenty minutes in. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I needed to prep for the podcast. I stopped watching. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, but it was uh, they were getting beat by the home. Uh, How, well, how's how's the USA looking this year? <laughs> How are we looking? <laughs> they, they don't have. They didn't qualify. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I barely did either. The U.S. didn't qualify. Correct for the World Cup. Correct. How, how does that ever happen? I. I've only started uh, becoming a soccer fan in the last couple of years since we got a major league team here. So I, I don't how, know how embarrassing for us. Thankfully, we're not hosting the United States. That I mean, the United worse. States is a pretty big nation. True. And we couldn't qualify, what, are there 90 teams? Uh, sure. We'll go with that. I don't know. 40, Man. 80, We've got to step up our game. Yeah, I know. We're like the opposite of basketball. Right, so right, right. For soccer. Right, yeah. <laughs> the dream team is not, <laughs> has a different meaning in, in yeah. uh, soccer. We're the, the U.S. is the Saudi Arabia of soccer. I think so. Wait, Saudi Arabia qualified. Yeah. And we didn't. Yeah, yeah so don't. Yeah, and we're wrong. making fun of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, what am I talking about? We need to be making fun of ourselves. <laughs> That's true. Saudi Arabia was They're pointing than us. fingers at us. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I'm embarrassed to be a fan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Were you. Uh, we've talked in past episodes about your love affair and tight friendship with Steph Curry. Oh. Yeah, close personal friend, close Steph Curry. Close personal friend. For people that haven't heard, you did tell me on the podcast last time that you've met Steph Curry. That's right. Of the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. You, you guys went to the same college. Mm -hmm. And you, what, what did you say? You had dinner? You guys went out and had dinner with some people? We had dinner together. That True is amazing. Story. My, my favorite person in the world, I suddenly was sitting face to face with having dinner. It was what a, what a delightful, bizarre, surreal experience. Yeah. And then once again... If I remember all this correctly, but then you grew up in uh, West Virginia, which 
Celtics because of uh, proximity. You became Cleveland sports fan, kind yes, of, correct? Yes, so it's very confusing. And yes, I did just get to see them match up. Again. Again, for the fourth straight year. I was sad. This I, I always root for stuff, but it was too lopsided this year. Way too lopsided. I mean, I felt bad for LeBron. He, he just had no shot. It was LeBron versus an amazing basketball team. Yeah. And it was just LeBron. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because every morning I woke up this year to sports radio and the the GOAT debate, greatest of all time debate, mm-hmm. was just raging. Just people calling in angry, defending Michael Jordan. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, Michael Jordan quit. They let him play baseball. That's how good he was. <laughs> it's like, I I think they would let LeBron pay, play baseball. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they would let him play, too. <laughs> but I just don't like... I don't understand why we have to compare different eras, you know? It'd be like, oh, if you see some beautiful shooting star shoot across the night sky, you're like, oh, that was amazing. And then some guy behind you is like, not as good as the one in 86. And you're like, what? Can't I just enjoy this shooting star? It's because of the word best, if or greatest. As if there weren't words like greatest and best, but when one generation says it, it's inevitable. The, the older one is going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, my guy. You weren't around, so how the hell would you know? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I will admit, uh, I, I watched some of that game four the mm-hmm. final game yeah boring blowout and i started and i even tweeted out something which i never about basketball but i did about like uh it was a, it was a rip on lebron yeah so i'm one of the people joe i well, said uh, jordan never got swept in the finals i mean he never even lost in the finals let alone got swept in the finals well you should take you should consider the fact that it turned out lebron had a bra- broken hand That's, for the last three games yeah, i didn't know that when i treated him also <laughs> jordan got swept before the finals a few times oh, i don't remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing jordan got swept before he got to the finals yeah you know and and just and so Le- lebron anyway lebron carried a terrible team to the finals again and Hopefully he gets some credit for carrying such a terrible team yeah. to the finals. But but it was it was a bummer that that game won. Cleveland had it. They had the win with about 30 seconds left. And if Cleveland had won that, they would have had the 1-0 lead. LeBron would not have broken his hand in the locker room being angry. And if then it that's have, what happened. And then it would have been a much more interesting series. Yeah. The Golden State still would have won. But it would have been an interesting series. You know, uh, one of LeBron's teammates, Kevin Love, we used to play for the Timberwolves. He once oh, yeah. had a broken hand out of nowhere, and they claimed it was be from doing knuckle push-ups. Oh, really? Or that's what he told the media. But then I think the true story was that he punched a teammate or punched something. Well, LeBron admitted that he punched like a chalkboard. So he admitted that he was an idiot. If it was a chalkboard. Oh, you think it was J.R. Smith? It could have been. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? It probably wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It probably wasn't. J.R. Smith. Um, oh, here's the other thing I want. Uh, there was a second thing I wanted to bring up about past uh, conversations we've had. About a, about a car. Are you still living without a car in New York? Yeah, it's going. Just the bicycle. It's going well. It's going well? I'm, I'm going. It's going so well that... I just dropped my non-owner's car insurance. I, I, I For some reason, I was paying for non-owner's car insurance. They duped me into that. I don't even know what that means. Geico was like, oh, you're getting rid of your car. Do you want non-owner's car insurance? I'm like, do I need it? And of course, I'm talking to a Geico salesman. So they're like, yeah, you need it <laughs> in case you ever drive somebody else's somebody car. Somebody else's car. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll pay for that. I didn't need it. Um, what? And my bicycle was stolen. I live in New York, so I was expecting it to get stolen. Mm-hmm. But but it was finally, the chain was snipped, and it was stolen. So now I'm going to have to jog out of New York if there's an apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I've been practicing my jogging. John. I've got a good three mile, but that's about as far as I can jog. John. I can do three miles. <laughs> well. Yeah, but no car. Uh, going strong. A lot of lifts. A lot of lifts mm-hmm. and a lot of walking. Okay. But I like it. I like not having a car. Having a car in New York is brutal. There's no place to park. Driving is terrible. 
you get a parking ticket everywhere you park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose. Got the bike stolen. Well, that's no good. And I fly it all, you know, I fly it all my gigs. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I want you to know that uh, I did you a favor this morning. Mm-hmm. I signed a petition. Oh, you did. Change.org. Thank you. For <laughs> you, Joe Zimmerman, to <laughs> become friends with Matt Damon. It's my cause that I'm fighting for. <laughs> we all have to have a cause, uh-huh. right? It's something we believe in. And I learned that um, that anybody can make a petition about anything they want. That, that never occurred to me. Not and, me neither. And uh, I've always wanted to be friends with Matt Damon. I think we would hit it off. Um, so I took action. And last I checked, there were 160. So now there must be 161, at least. Mm -hmm. 161 signatures, which means my petition titled Matt Damon Should Be My Friend will now be searchable at whitehouse.gov after 150 signatures. And I think if I can get it to 100,000 signatures, that it means it has to be presented in front of Congress. (laughs) So that's my goal, is for some congressman to be like, well... There's a lot of supporters for Matt Damon to be Joe Zimmerman's friend. Yeah. So wh- I guess we need to put this into action as a possible, <laughs> as a possible, uh, what do they do? How do they do? Pass laws? I don't know what they do. I don't know. Would that be broadcast like on C-SPAN or something? Because I, 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 Yeah, it would be on C-SPAN. <laughs> I want to watch that. Yeah. Oh, I've please. got a long way to go, but, <laughs> but it's searchable. Matt Damon should be my friend. Um, change.org. You just do a little signature. I would appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, and then well, you're talking about this on stage a bit, mm-hmm. and I think you mentioned that once you sign one, then it was like, oh, hey, maybe you are interested in supporting these other ones. Yeah, that's how I learned about it because I signed a petition to save the sea lion from the West Edmonton oh, Mall. Yes, yes, yes. And then it just went from there. Yeah, because somebody told me I needed to sign it, and uh, and then it said, oh, if you like this petition. You might also be interested in saving Philip the Dolphin yeah. from the Japanese Motor Show. And yeah. you're like, oh, all right, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I hadn't thought about it. Or, and then you need, now you might want to save uh, Snowflake, the pot belly pig, from being removed from his Cambridge home. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, all right. I, I don't have anything against Snowflake. I'll sign that, and then it gets. They just get. They just devolve into uh, demand Taco Bell. Give two hot sauce packets for every burrito because one's not enough and yeah i i I was suggested one um to support some guy who wants to work on getting xbox games so guys on xbox can play people on playstation after you signed mine that was yes really yeah that's amazing yeah so I no, I didn't sign it. No, I was. I'm, I need more information. I'm curious what mine is. What they've paired mine with? Oh well, I took a pic. I should have done all of them. Um, nice. I took a picture of one of them. Um, let me see. I'm going to pull it up on my phone right now. Are they all silly, or some of them serious? Oh, some of them are. Yeah, this one is serious. <laughs> Uh, did you know every year on the summer solstice, solstice, thousands of dogs are rounded up to be eaten? Oh, boy. Yeah. Dog meat festival. That's a thing? Yes. And where? I'm afraid to ask. In, in China. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. So they want you, they want the dog meat place to be, how that ties into you being friends with Matt Damon. That's I, the direct link. I'm not sure. Wow. I'm glad I'm paired with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you believe in that one? We put an end to the dog eating festival? I would sign that, yes. You would sign that. I like dogs. Yeah. I do not support eating them. Okay. I'm a big fan of dogs. Good, good, good. good. Me, me neither. Me neither. I, uh, I'm i curious. Last night you mentioned... Uh, you mentioned our freaking zoo and Sparky the Seal. Yeah. Well done. Thank with you. With the local references. Oh, yeah. I actually went today... And looked up, I'm like, is he, was that legit what he was? $20 million for a new Spark exhibit. Yeah. Yeah. I missed that. That's a lot of money for a sea lion. I missed that in the news last week, (laughs) and you didn't. (laughs) Well, I ask around, what's the news in Minneapolis? And somebody, my friend Tom Myers. Uh, I'm sorry. News in St. Paul. Como Zoo is in St. Paul. Como Zoo, my bad. So let's circle circle back to that for a moment. He said, well, they're... They, we just spent twenty million on a new sea lion exhibit. Yeah, <laughs> all right, that's a lot. I, yeah, I feel like you guys overpaid for a sea lion exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna be many years of tickets. 
Yeah, I, I and, and um, <laughs> again, free. There's no admission to that. Oh, so apparently that's just Minnesota taxpayer dollars. Uh, yeah, or or donations. I'm not sure where, but uh, yeah. oh, maybe it's donations. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it was donations. Yeah, uh, that's cool. You got Sparky the Seal. I don't know. I think it's kind of weird that you're on your fifth Sparky. Is that what you heard? Fifth? I read that. Oh, you did. Okay. Because um, I would have guessed even more. It seems like, but I don't know. Also, don't know their lifespan. It seems lifespan. like we should just name these sea lions new names. We don't need to throw back to ghost sea lions. Okay, so then when the when the school group shows up and then they're like, oh, the teachers all week were like, we're gonna go see Sparky, and then the guys like, hey everybody, it's Jimbo. Like, where's Sparky? Oh, Sparky died. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a good way to teach youth that. Uh... <laughs> That uh, things pass. <laughs> I guess. Spark, uh, that, uh, that way, the they youth is like, that, and currently, the youth is like, how come, how come Sparky's darker yeah. this time? <laughs> Sparky seems changed. Yeah. He's got a different aura about him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sparky lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> They're dying. Are they starving, Sparky? Sparky seems sadder than he used to be. <laughs> Sparky seems younger than he used to be. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, I guess you got a hiatus on Sparky till 2019. Yeah, I used to. Yeah, that is, uh, I mean, that has been around for a long time. I used to go see Sparky when I was a kid. I've taken oh. my kids to see Sparky. Good performance. Oh yeah, good show. I've never seen uh, someone balance a ball on their nose better. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, have you ever noticed that there are certain jokes, you know, I'm not a comedian, but I feel like sometimes, how do I say this? The back of the room here, a lot of times is we're like the comedians, like when you were in the, you sat in the back last night when you were watching some of the other people work. Yeah. A lot of times that's where, uh, working or non-working comedians kind of hang out, watch the show. I've noticed, um, some jokes that will hit super hard with the majority of the crowd, might not get a laugh out of like the the, the comedy nerds or the co- the comedians. Totally right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then other things will be so fucking funny to that exact crowd, and then the main audience is just like right over their heads, or they're just like, I, there's not really a reaction. Yeah. You had one last night where I was like, whoa, I laughed way too loud for that. <laughs> like, I'm curious what those are because I really can't hear you in the back because you're in the back. Interesting. Okay. And I actually thought, should I be bringing this up on the podcast? So, But here we are, Joe. Okay, great. And I'm not going to give the, uh, I don't want to ruin the joke because it's a really good one, but okay. it was the, um, it's the, it's the one where you're asking about, uh, well, I'll give the answer. The answer is Matt Damon, Matt Damon, and Matt Damon. Oh, I, I Do you, can't. Does believe... that joke normally? Because I seem like I laughed way harder than the majority. So you of the laughed audience. at the punchline. Yes. Okay. Hard. I I love that you. I'm shocked, and I love that you brought that up because that is a joke that I keep trying to bring back and resurface because that joke is really funny to me. It's hilarious, and it never hits with the audience. So I'm like, am I wrong about comedy? Okay, but I'm happy. But for some reason, it works. For some reason, it works for the back of the room. But for some reason, the front of the room doesn't go for it. I'm not sure why. Okay, I'm not. I have not figured out why. It's the. It's my. It's my biggest mystery right now in comedy. Really? Is why does my Matt Damon punchline not hit as hard for the crowd? Because apparently, it works for me and you. I- it, now, I find it funny, and the other comics seem to think it's funny. Okay, now this is the only thing I can think of. Is it because uh, I, because I know a little something about you, maybe a little more than people who just showed up yeah. to see their friends in the contest? And I know that there's a that you joke about a Matt Damon thing, and it just wasn't. Yeah, I think if you like know me as a person, you find it funny that I love Matt Damon. <laughs> but also, I think maybe if you're a comedy nerd. You're more aware of where the where the trick in the joke is, I guess. That could be it. I'll just do I'll just try to do the joke and if you're listening and if you have the answer of why it doesn't work with the audience <laughs> I shouldn't say it never works. Um, you know, this is gonna be a huge debate in the future. <laughs> Historians will be like, 
How come Joe's Matt Damon joke never worked? <laughs> it was it was such a great joke. And then somebody else would be like, it can't have never worked. Otherwise, he wouldn't have kept yeah, doing never, it. Never. Mm, I don't know about never. <laughs> it's more like it hits really hard one in three times. Okay. And the other two times, not at all. Um, and I, it's the ultimate mystery. So if you know the answer to this mystery, please tell me. But honestly... Um, yeah, you can write to Justin and maybe he can pass it along. But it's something along the lines of I don't like some. It's it's about how I don't like small talk. I tr I swag segue from something else, and I say like I like to ask deep questions like you know if you could change your name to anything, what would it be? If you could be best friends with anyone, who would you pick? And what is your favorite Matt Damon movie? And if you want to get to know me, my answers would be Matt Damon, Matt Damon, and great question. There are so many options. Goodwill Hunting, Born Identity. I do think We Bought a Zoo was underrated. Thank you for <laughs> suggesting that. Um, and that never hits particularly hard, but I think it's funny. <laughs> I think it's I funny. It. And I'm still, and I keep bringing it back because I'm like, this has to be funny. There has to be a way to make this funny. And I think my theory is that you have to either know me personally to think it's funny or you have to understand the irony of of it maybe people are like yeah matt damon's great maybe there's no irony there hmm. i don't know yeah i don't know I, I, I obviously it's it's silly there's a silliness to it but um but people seem to be like or maybe people just aren't following the the logic of it i don't know yeah i don't know well, they're wrong. But, yeah, comedy nerds listening, if you have theories as to why, it, how it could hit harder with the, the front of the room, yeah, please write Justin. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very curious. Because it is the, it, historians will debate it. <laughs> They'll look back. And for all I know, it'll be, you know, my great masterpiece. It'll be my Mona Lisa. <laughs> They'll be like, who, what, what, what did this mean to Joe? Who is Matt Damon to Joe? <laughs> is Matt Damon Joe's mother? <laughs> Is Matt Damon Joe? Why is Joe obsessed with Matt Damon? Millions of years from, thousands of years from now. Like, what a great classic joke that never worked in his time. It'll be the Mona Lisa slash Van Gogh. That's right. Yeah. Cl classic Zimmerman. More likely. Nobody will ever discuss it, ever. <laughs> but uh, but I'm going to go with the former. Yes. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. So much. The, last night, they also had the uh, couple of people were doing the funniest person contest. Uh huh. Did you? Ever... John and Ryan. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> nice job. John S. Okay. Yeah. One. He did. Congrats to John S. Congrats, John S. Good. Good luck in the next round. Yeah. Uh, did you ever do anything like that? Starting uh, out. Yes and no. Yes and no. No, in that my first year of doing comedy, there was no opportunity. I, I couldn't even find a contest to enter into. I started in Charlotte, North Carolina. I just doing an open mic in a coffee shop. And there was no, if there was a contest, I'd be like, sign me up. I want to see if I'm funny. Yeah. I have no idea. But, uh, but there was just not a contest to be had. So I didn't sign up. Um, the closest I ever came was about after doing comedy for about a year and a half there, they used to do things called the Carnival Cruise Competition. Oh. Which were much harsher, much, 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 much harsher than whatever Acme's comedy contest is. The Carnival Cruise was just three comedy bookers, no audience. You have two minutes to perform for them, and they're like, uh, no, that was, that was terrible. And, or they're like, all right, you're on to the next round. No laughs. And, uh... And then you go to this next round, the final round, and there's an audience, and there's about 10 comics in the finals. And the winner wins a uh, headlining performance on the Carnival Cruises. Okay, I was wondering, what's the payoff? So the winner is usually like a traveling road comic who knows how to entertain people. Okay, yeah. So I advanced to the second round, passed a little two-minute thing, and then just bombed so hard for my six-minute spot. Oh, to go to win a carnival cruise performance and uh i bombed so badly 
in my only competition that the judge, who's a booker, comedy booker, said, uh, well, I like your shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is the worst thing you can... Uh, which is obviously the worst thing that you can, that, which obviously means you've done the worst you can possibly do. Yeah. I don't even think I was had a particularly good shirt. <laughs> so. I, hey, nice beard. I wish that I had had a nice, you know, opportunity to do a little comedy contest at a sweet, nice room like this where the audience is supportive. Yeah. Right. And where the judges don't roast you from their from their seats <laughs> in front of everybody. Nice shirt. Yeah, this is a nice contest situation where you get to perform in front of a real crowd and then nobody yells at you afterwards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not shamed afterwards. No. And eventually, if you beat everybody else by the end of the summer, you get a thousand bucks. Yeah. It seems like a it seems like a very nice way to do a, a yeah. contest. For sure. Let's. Um, you have started. I don't think you were doing your podcast when you were here last. Is it less, less than a year old? Correct. Oh yeah, it's new. It's new. We just Let's did, talk about it. We were into our tenth episode, um, so we have ten episodes. It's called a great listening experience. Uh, it's a podcast where I seek infinite knowledge and power mm-hmm. through my podcast, and I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Okay. To getting infinite knowledge and power, um, the one we just recorded that's about to be released. Um, we we talk about. Oh, we talk about art masterpieces. Uh, we talk about the Waffle House effect. Uh, no, the Waffle House index. We talk about a hypothetical fight to the death. We just have a fun time. It's a comedy podcast. Who's we? Me and Tom Cowell, who's the smartest person I know. He has information about everything. Uh, he's a comedian as well. British. British. I've listened. He went to Oxford. And uh, we. it's a comedy podcast where we don't really talk about comedy so it's just comedians hopefully you're just laughing and learning and but mostly laughing and you don't you don't have to hear shop talk there's not like comedy shop talk it's just two comedians um discussing things that are going on in the world yeah in a humorous manner yeah yeah so it's good it's a great listening experience <laughs> i'm uh, yeah but what's it called it's uh, it's called a great listening experience hey! There we go. Yeah. Who's on first? You can get it on Spotify or iTunes free. No ads. There's no ads yet. So ad free, 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 free. How do you, how did Tom, your co-host, how do you know him? Uh, he's a comedian. He's a friend and comedian in in New York city. Okay. Uh, and I just, we have good chemistry together. So we, uh, started it and, uh, we're off to the races. Yeah. Off to the races. Yeah. You're digging it. That's good. Yeah. I listened to episode nine. Oh, cool. That was where you uh, talked about, it was recorded right after the Royal, the royal Wedding, which yeah. was interesting to, or before or after, but you talked a lot about it. Yeah. And it was interesting to hear you talk to someone with like, you know, someone British, someone with firsthand knowledge of, yeah, of, you know, of that point of view. It of was. American's point of view. Because it's confusing why, like, it's confusing why we care about the British family. They're not. They're not still ruling Britain. No, I know. <laughs> I, my just... kids were, uh, you know, as a divorced dad, you know, kids every other weekend. That weekend was a, the weekend of the royal wedding I had my kids. And I, I recorded, you know, in the middle of the morning or whatever, real super early morning, I recorded the wedding to see if anybody wanted to watch it later. My daughters, I put it on. Holy shit. Could they have been, le- they could not have been less interested. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What would be interesting about... I don't know. Princess? It's a princess? My issue is, yeah, I went to St. Andrews for a semester while Prince William was there. And people would say, oh, Prince William's on the quad right now. You want to go? And you're like, why? Why would I want to go? What are we going to do? Say hi to Prince William? Why would that be interesting? Right. There's, he's done... I don't have anything against him. I just think... But he's literally done nothing. He was born. Right. And then did nothing. So what are you going to talk to him about? Like, oh, it's so cool that you're the prince. What's that like? Yeah. End of conversation. Uh-huh. Like, man, if I think a lift, if I think a lift drive is hard, can you imagine how hard Prince William and Prince Harry would have it? Yeah, good point. Oh, you're the prince. Oh, 
what's that like? They're just like, well, you're born, and then you just live your life, and everybody takes photos. Mm Mm-hmm. And asks you about it forever. <laughs> I, you know, the thing that really, I, uh, anything that from that, the only thing that I've walked away from the royal wedding with knowledge is that um, the older brother, not William, but what's, or, uh, you know, I only know Harry and William. Yeah, William. Yeah, Harry's the one that just got married. William yeah. is the older one. Yeah. Uh, is how bald he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's sad, though. I just, I mean, he must be exactly my age and he looks super old and i'm like oh no that's that's my age (laughs) (laughs) i just saw a thing a a news piece about facebook losing three million users in the next year of 25 years and under okay but they're going to gain three million users 35 and over Uh i'm like these old people gravitating toward facebook and i'm like wait a minute that's my demo (laughs) am i that old that my demo is joining facebook that is so old oh wait am i in the demographic of late adapters (laughs) shit it makes no sense i was the first person that had facebook (laughs) how am i joining facebook now it's so stupid but i'm in that old age group that's flocking to facebook Mm -hmm. apparently you go yep see what all the all the fuss is about Oh, very frustrating. <laughs> How much are you, uh, that actually could probably be one of the last things we talk about here. How are you using social media these days? Uh, I think my favorite one to use is Instagram. I'm at Joe Zimmerman and I post fun photos and silly, yeah, it's fun to post silly videos and silly photos. And I feel like that's where most of my friends are that I interact with, you know, the DMs and the, the hearts, um, Twitter. I also do Twitter. I, I I'm at Joe Zimmerman. I do Twitter, uh, and I'm on Facebook. But I feel like Instagram is feels the most personal to me. Mm-hmm. You can do the little Instagram stories. Uh, I'll post one today of the mini golf I did. I posted one yesterday of doing pull ups at oh, Ac- I saw that one. at Acme Comedy Club. I kept uh, it repeated so many times. I thought you did like 200. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can do 200. Oh, okay. But I just only did two last night, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so uh, Instagram I enjoy. I enjoy. I don't know what it is about it. The only frustrating thing about Instagram is it's only on your phone. So you have to really be hooked on your phone. Oh, yeah. You know? It's, uh-huh. more of, it's a phone app. It's very specific to phone. Whereas Facebook and Twitter you can do from your computer. Uh, hmm, I never realized that. Yeah, you're right. Which is odd. You'd, so you'd think Instagram would get the computer going at some point. But I learned recently, Instagram owned by Facebook. Facebook, yeah. So for all those people that are like, I'm leaving Facebook because of privacy issues. <laughs> now I'm just using Instagram. Well, that information is just straight to Facebook. Yeah, nice try. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Nice try. Yeah. I just remembered one more thing we need to talk about. Oh, and I want you to know if you're ever checking, if you ever want to know more about yourself, just check what targeted ads you're getting on Instagram. It will tell you everything you need to know about yourself. Oh, and what you're telling the world. And it's your, probably not good through your footprint. Yeah, through your internet footprint. Uh huh. Uh, my most recent ad was to buy the book, The Magic art of tidying <laughs> what because i'm obsessed with self-help books oh, and i nice. was like i need to clean my apartment and then immediately that was the ad i'm like well, how did this happen tidying uh yeah yeah uh i like when i'm searching for like a gift uh you know some sort of gift for one of my daughters and then that something related mm-hmm. to that pops up like that yeah. this was a gift idea i'm not really into uh <laughs> preteen novels right <laughs> All right, so hit me. What's our final thing? Your final thing is you recorded an album since we've talked, correct? I did. I, I recorded an album, a new album with Comedy Central Records okay. that will drop this summer, either late July or August, uh, called Innocence. Innocence. Yeah. Okay. Recorded where? Recorded at the Vermont Comedy Club in Burlington, Vermont. Okay. Yeah, which is a fun new comedy club. B- Burlington, nice hippie granola town, sweet people. Uh, and, uh, yeah, innocence, uh, kind of named after a joke I do about how I get paranoid about 
being charged for a crime I didn't do. Oh, yes. And so I'll play a game in my head called Can I Prove Where I Was At Yesterday? And then I go through different times of the day and see if I can prove where I was Love at. Love it. Love it. And uh, Love it. so I decided to call the album Innocence because it sort of fits my personality. Mm-hmm. As well as that joke. Oh, completely. Yeah. All right. So July, you said. Late August. July or August. Okay. It'll, it'll come Comedy out. Central Records. Yeah. Innocence. iTunes, Spotify, Pandora. And my old album's on Pandora as well. Yeah, I hope you you can just make me a Pandora channel or just find it on Spotify. No, it's not, it's not that old. It's an album. It's uh, Smiling at Wolves. Yeah. It's a recent album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, uh, yeah. And then <laughs> this is what we, let's do it again. Remember what I was told you about that album on my phone? Oh, that here, something popped up? That every time I got my car plugged in my phone, it was the first track of your album is number one. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, so it would autoplay because it was called A- ADD. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it so, just went alphabetical? Yes. So every time I would start my car pl- and I have my phone plugged in, you know, to charge it or play You're something. You're now up. the third person that's told me this. So yeah. apparently that's an actual thing that happens to people. Yes. They're yes. getting my track first. And, and now... So I, I I took your I still own it but I took it off. The, Smart. Yes. Yeah, Smart. And now the first A track on my phone is still because it just happened on the way here and I realized holy shit now it's been over a year since I've switched that I need to switch to something else because I'm tired of hearing the beginning of Against All Odds by Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. It was me and then Phil Collins. Uh huh. Wow. So uh It'll I, be interesting to see what takes that what takes Phil Collins place. I promise you, Joe, you come back again next year, it will have changed and we I will bring this up again. I'm excited to find out. <laughs> All right. There's the cliffhanger, everybody. Stay tuned. What is another song with an A in it? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be ABBA's self titled song ABBA. <laughs> Nope, because I don't like that. Fair <laughs> if enough. that's even a thing. Joe, thank you for the I like laughs. The, I thank like you for you hanging admitted, out with me for an hour here. I like that you've admitted that you enjoy the stylings of my comedy and the music of Phil Collins. <laughs> Damn right. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. We go, we, it's a perfect pairing. Yeah. It's like red wine and salmon. I, I'll argue for hours on why I'm right about that. Red wine and steak, sorry. Red wine and steak. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you, Joe. Come out to some shows this week. Please, everybody, come out here. Boom, we did it.